Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips and I want to talk about hormone replacement therapy for menopausal women today. It's an important topic and it's interesting that I found this particular article that I'm going to cover at the same time that we had some new people join uh, Wellness Forum who one of the reasons why they joined was these were women who had been diagnosed with breast cancer who had been taking uh, hormone replacement therapy. So it seemed like a good time to cover this particular topic. So this new analysis that I'm going to talk about concluded that taking any type of hormone therapy for the treatment of menopause symptoms increases the risk of breast cancer. Even once you discontinue the treatment, the risk remains higher for a year and the risk level depends upon how long the hormones were taken. The analysis included 58 studies that included over 143,887 postmenopausal women with invasive breast cancer. Those were the cases. And then the controls were 424,972 women without breast cancer. For women who developed breast cancer, the average age at menopause was 50, and the average age at which hormone replacement was started was also age 50. Hysterectomy was the main determinant of the type of hormone therapy. Most women who had hysterectomy took a combination of estrogen and progesterone product, while women who didn't have a hysterectomy were more inclined to take an estrogen-only product. According to co-author Jillian Reeves, PhD, hormone therapy for 10 years results in a two times higher risk of breast cancer as compared with taking hormones for five years. The risk was higher for combination estrogen-progestin products, particularly if progesterone was taken daily as opposed to intermittently. So when you see a dose dependent effect, the longer you take it, the worse things get. That usually strengthens the association. So I'm just gonna break down the data and, and give it to you as it appears in the article. I think it's important to really understand what this is all about. Risk was higher for women taking combination estrogen progesterone drugs, higher in current versus past users and increased in both current and past users based on duration of use. The longer you take it, the higher your risk. Taking hormones for five years starting at age 50 would increase the risk of breast cancer by one in every 50 women who took estrogen progestin daily, one in every 70 users for women who took estrogen and intermittent uh, progestin, and one in every 200 women who took estrogen alone. So the progesterone definitely made things significantly worse. Five-year daily use of estrogen progestin beginning at age 50 would increase 20-year risk from 6.3 to 8.3% for an additional two diagnoses per 100 women. Daily use of estrogen and intermittent progestin results in an increased risk of 1.4 cases per 100 women. And I'm going to quantify this in a different way for you in a minute that I think brings home, but I wanted you to understand this data first. While risk begins at a year, for women who took hormones for an extended period of time, increased risk persisted for over 10 years after discontinuation of the drugs, which is truly frightening. So if you're watching this, and this is horrifying you, you, you want to quit taking the drugs, but um, it takes a while for your risk to even out. My opinion about this, by the way, is you can speed up the reduction in risk by taking really great care of yourself. For women in the data set, a uh, few women in the data set, I should say, had started taking hormone therapy in their 30s, but for those who were still taking either estrogen progesterone combinations or estrogen alone, the risk of developing breast cancer was significantly higher than controls. Exceptions included taking hormones for less than a year or using suppositories, which doesn't result in the estrogen getting into the bloodstream. The authors report that about 75% of all breast cancer cases and deaths in postmenopausal women are estrogen receptor positive and that estrogen levels are a strong predictor of breast cancer, which is one of the connections between taking these products and an increased risk and a reason why we should pay attention to the issue. At this time, about 12 million women are currently taking hormone therapy for menopause. The researchers report that these data indicate that as many as 1 million women have developed breast cancer as a result of taking menopausal hormone products since 1990 in westernized countries. And this is really, this kind of brings it all home. Sometimes when you listen to a list of statistics, it becomes almost mind numbing, but a million women with breast cancer induced by taking prescription drugs is something to really pay attention to. The authors also note that fat cells produce hormones converted to estrogen in the bloodstream by aromatase, an enzyme. Research shows that postmenopausal women who are overweight or obese have an increased risk of estrogen receptor positive breast cancer, even if they don't take supplemental hormones. 
overweight and obese women who take hormones have an increased risk over and above their weight status. Um, but the increased amount is not quite as much as it is for lean women. But the hormones are a bad idea for all women. It is true that the increased risk is relatively low, but when, when people say that, I will tell you this. So many women and men who have um, been told, well, you know, if you take this drug or whatever, it's a very low risk. They said, you know, it doesn't feel such low risk when it's me who's been affected by this. So I would keep that in mind. But most women aren't told that HRT increases their risk at all. Yet, as soon as postmenopausal women taking hormones are diagnosed with breast cancer, often the first thing their doctors say is, my gosh, stop taking the hormones. And in the case of the couple of women who just recently joined in this situation, that's exactly what happened. Their doctors immediately took them off of HRT. And what one of them said to me is, why didn't this guy tell me in the beginning that this was gonna be a problem? Any risk, actually, in my opinion, is too high since the unpleasant symptoms that are usually the motivator for taking HRT can be successfully addressed with diet and lifestyle change. Additionally, symptoms of menopause that are significant enough to require this type of intervention are a sign that something is wrong. And I think you've listened to me long enough, those of you who are longtime listeners, to know that treating symptoms instead of cause just really postpones addressing poor health status, sometimes for very long periods of time, which results in a problem that might not have been so serious turning into something serious, such as, in this case, breast cancer, heart disease, type 2 diabetes, arthritis, and, and other conditions. Menopause, let's keep in mind, is a natural process that takes place in all women as they age. It's not a disease that should need treatment with drugs or supplements. Adopting optimal habits is the best way to address discomfort associated with menopause. And so, um, first of all, you can do something about this without taking the risk of increasing your risk of breast cancer. And if you do something about it, one of the things that I love about diet and lifestyle change, weight loss, exercise, all the stuff that I talked about here is the breadth of the effect. You reduce your risk of breast cancer. You reduce your risk of heart attack, stroke, cardiovascular disease, autoimmune diseases, all the th Alzheimer's disease, all the things that you don't want to have happen to you. So. Um, I hope that this is a good warning for any woman taking the hormones. And by the way, the bioidentical hormones, not any better. This particular study didn't look at those, but there is no safety data that is reliable on bioidentical hormones, so I don't advise those either. All right, if you're not a subscriber, hit the button, subscribe, and as usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it, and I'll be back to you next week with more news.